You know, I've given a couple of high-minded answers in interviews before. But when it comes down to it, the reason that we started this show in the first place was for times just like this. When I first came to Heath and I said, hey, dude, we should start an atheist podcast, he basically just said, yeah, good call. But if he had asked me why, my answer would have been because once in a while I see shit online that pisses me off so much that I have to find somebody else to vent to or my wife is going to divorce me. And here I am in precisely one of those situations. I log on to Facebook the other day. I see that scores of our listeners have shared the same video. So even before I checked out what it was or anything, I had a feeling I might have just found the subject for this week's diatribe. There's a good chance you've already seen the clip I'm bitching about. Uh, it's started making the rounds the day after we dropped last week's show. So it's had plenty of time to percolate through the atheist community, and a number of prominent bloggers and podcasters have sounded off on it. But in case you haven't heard about it, or in case you're listening in archives, let me lay out what's got my nuts in a bunch here. So apparently there's a show on ABC called What Would You Do? The premise is that they hide a camera and then they get a bunch of actors to play out some everyday situation and they test to see what random strangers around them will do, right? So it's like a, like a Psych 101 version of Candid Camera. An old man needs help changing his tire, but will anyone stop? You know, that kind of thing. So I guess on last Friday's show, they decided to act out the following everyday scenario. You have a clean-cut family with 2.3 kids and a mortgage and shit, and they're at a diner, and they all join hands to pray before they eat. And then an angry atheist gets up, crosses the fucking restaurant, and tells them to stop praying because she's an atheist. You know, like we do. Just your everyday run-of-the-mill, how dare you pray near me, now stop it before I shit on your brioche-type moments that we atheists are want to instigate. You know, the kind of thing that happens when you don't pay actors to act this shit out. Look, I'm not trying to brag here, but I have never met an atheist that is a bigger asshole than me. I'm vitriolic, I'm vulgar, callous, disrespectful, blasphemous, contemptuous, and crass for a fucking living. And the most you would ever see me do if I saw a family praying next to me at dinner is roll my eyes. You catch me on a particularly bad day, and I might loudly thank the naked, masturbating ghost of George Carlin for my food when it comes out, but the nonsensical scenario that they've created is the kind of thing that only happens in Kirk Cameron movies and Pat Robertson's cough syrup nightmares. But despite that fact, the producers over at What Would You Do consider this the kind of everyday situation that they could just recreate. Now, keep in mind, everyday situation, that is their term. That's how they describe their show on their fucking website, putting people in everyday situations to find out what they would do. And in this instance, they were completely unable to separate everyday occurrence from asinine stereotype created by oppressive zealots trying to undermine legitimate efforts at social reform by conflating them with completely unreasonable caricatures. You know, imagine a guy walks into the pitch meeting. He says, okay, so we're going to have an actress. She's going to play a feminist. She walks in and demands to use whichever fucking bathroom she wants. Or, or you know, like two lesbians walk into a Christian bookstore. They start handing out buy two, get one free abortion coupons. You, do you think that those would pass for the everyday situations they're looking for? I mean, even if every single person involved in the decision chain is a Christian that hates atheists, it's still their job not to offend large swaths of people by accident, isn't it? So how is it that nobody realized that they were reinforcing a defamatory stereotype? Now, some of it clearly comes from a concerted effort from the religious right to promote and reinforce said stereotype, right? You, you got Fox News out there willing to put their full and unabiding trust in any sixth grader who insists he was suspended from school for reading his Bible and definitely not jerking off in a library. Meanwhile, you've got these pastors telling their flocks that atheists are trying to pass laws that will allow us to feed them to lions if they say bless you when we sneeze. you got religious teachers telling their students at religious schools and public schools that we just made the whole evolution thing up and backed it up with a worldwide conspiracy of journals, symposiums, and conferences and no Nobel Prizes just to fuck them out of their Jesus juice. So sure, the pump is primed to believe that this is the kind of shit atheists do all the time, but there's also something else at work here because many of these fuckers, including all the ones that work at ABC apparently, honestly don't see the difference between trying to remove prayer from a public meeting and screaming at a random family while they're trying to say grace. They see stories about atheist groups trying to get high school football coaches to stop leading their teams in prayer, and they figure this is, you know, this is the same situation only in a diner. It's the same phenomenon that leaves them unable to see a substantive difference between a cake that says congratulations Carl and Phil and a cake that says God created AIDS to kill off the queers. You know, I guess they've just been adrift so long in their vast ocean of privilege that they've forgotten that there's a shoreline out there. It's, it's the social equivalent of those, like, evil little spike strips that they put outside of the bazillion-dollar Manhattan high-rises so that the homeless people won't lean against their shit. It's like telling the judge that the puppy rape was unavoidable because there's just no other way to get your dick into it.
And here's the most fucked up thing about it. Okay, so if you wanted to tweak that little segment on what would you do to make it believable, all you have to do is swap out the Christian family for a Muslim one and the atheist for a Christian. Now all of a sudden you've got something that really happens. And you have a truly interesting question about whether any of the Texan diners would stand up for a Muslim family. I mean, honestly, how many atheists have you seen on the news lined up outside a mosque to torment Muslims over their private worship? Any? Zero? Perhaps? How many atheists have you seen bully their way to a podium to rip the microphone out of a Muslim's hands while they're in the middle of a public prayer? I can show you a Christian doing that. How many atheists have you seen blocking the construction of a mosque or a Muslim cemetery or a Muslim rec center? It, it would take you two seconds to find a news story about Christians doing any one of those things. But if you want to find an atheist doing something like that, apparently you have to hire a bunch of actors and a bigoted TV producer.